This is not a documentary in which you will see and hear things that are widely known. This documentary will not show you anything that you might find in articles with flashy headlines like 3 tips to improve your sex life or this little trick will make you a machine in bed, which we have all tried and know they don't work. I am shooting this film now that I am cured from this health condition. I will tell you everything that I feel essential in the battle with premature ejaculation. I hope to change your understanding of PE and answering some of the most important questions and sharing how I cured myself. I am simply sharing my personal story and views on this problem. I am not forcing my opinion on anybody and I am not making anyone try the things and practices I have. Everyone has the right not to trust me or to remain skeptical. Be sensible. Self-treatment may turn out to be harmful for you. Always consult your practicing physician. Okay, let's begin. First, what exactly is premature ejaculation? You shoot your load too quickly. Not from time to time, but always. In other words, you are unable to control the moment of ejaculation and as a result you can't lead your girlfriend to orgasm. Data from different sources may vary on the exact numbers, but it shows that from one-fifth to one-third of the men in the world suffer from premature ejaculation. That means that for 20 to 33% of the men, sex lasts no longer than one minute. Second, is this even a health condition? And my answer is yes, it definitely is. The most important evidence is that the person feels ill and senses that something is not alright with him. If someone is worried by the symptoms, get anxious at the tough of sex and tries to avoid it because he is afraid of embarrassment, then this is a disease, no matter how we look at it. I have met people who suffer from PE but comfort themselves, thinking it's just the way they are. This is sad. I think they are too lazy to try and cure themselves. Third, is PE a psychological problem? I'm sure that I'll surprise a lot of people here. The mental state does affect the duration of sex, but a visit to the psychologist or sexologist cannot cure someone of PE. I'm saying this because I think it's more a functional problem rather than a psychological one. I've heard lots of people saying that they use a mental trick, imagining unpleasant things to avoid the tough of pleasure during sex and delay the ejaculation. This is so pathetic. This is not a way to cure PE. To be healthy means the exact opposite. To enjoy the act and to be in the moment slowed by the passion of your partner. Fourth, what types of ineffective treatment did I try? Diets, herbal mixtures, a lot of kinds, Viagra, Cialis, the Poxetin, a mix of the Poxetin and Viagra, psychiatrist, urologist, including surgery. Okay, let's look at them one by one in the order I tried them. Before all else, I decided to consult an urologist. That's the specialist you go to if you have male problems. Imagine a 17-year-old boy going to the doctor to tell him he is suffering from premature ejaculation and nothing helps. The shame I felt was unbearable. But, nevertheless, I shared it with the doctor and the nurse standing right beside him that I can't hold it for more than a few seconds. He examined me, including my internal organs, and said that everything was in the norm, meaning I was healthy. So he prescribed me pills tyridazine. This medication belongs to the group of antipsychotics and suppresses the absorption of dopamine in the brain. It managed to slow down the ejaculation a little, 
but what a cost. I became super dull and drowsy all the time, sleeping through my days. In addition to that, Tyridazine took from me one of my most precious things, my dancing ability. I am a break dancer and dancing is huge passion for me. Unfortunately, because of the pills, my muscles grew very weak and I couldn't handle the weight of my body the way I used to. This led me to the conclusion that the life this medication offered is not the one I want to live. Plus, the positive effects it had on my sex life were not that great at all. The second thing I tried was herbal mixtures. I found their effect laughable because they increased my libido by a lot but did nothing for the premature ejaculating. At that time I was 17, 18 years old boy. Even without the herbs I was thinking mostly about sex but they turned me into an animal that put sex before food. I tried a few kinds of herbal mixtures. Some were in the form of pills and others you make a tea out of. And I kept trying different ones over a number of years afterwards, but not a single herb cured me of PE. After that I decided to go on a very strict diet and not consume anything unhealthy. I stayed away from sugar for 3 months straight. Never licked a candy, never even had a bite of dough because I knew they put sugar in bread too. To be honest, this was a very nice period. I felt wonderful. My face cleared from all pimples and dark spots. But, alas, the sex was the same. I switched over to a vegetarianism and I am still a vegetarian to this day. Let's say this adds a few extra seconds but nothing more. It doesn't appear to a curative. Number 4 was exercises for strengthening the pelvic floor. I won't waste your time with long unnecessary explanations. I put lots of time and effort into them and I think they are good for overall health but not effective in the battle with PE. The fifth thing I did was to go to psychiatrist. Fortunately, it was a man that knew me. I was friends with his son. He liked me very much and didn't even charge me for the session. He was upfront with me and explained that psychiatry and psychology don't produce satisfactory results in dealing with this problem. After that, he told me what alcohol to drink before sex to slow down the ejaculation, but he was aware that this was not a good solution. Finding out about phrenolomectomy brought me back to the urologist door. This is a surgery in which the most sensitive part of the penis is cut out and may possibly cure PE. It turned out to be a very light operation and the doctor performed it right after the examination. It was extremely painful because the anesthesia was very weak. So what do you think the result was? That's right, none. Zero percent. Well, at least my penis became a little more handsome, so if I look at it as a cosmetic surgery, I am satisfied. And the last one, number 7, by that time it became clear to me that all those safe methods I have been using won't bear a fruit and I decided to bring out the big guns. I felt mortified because I, a 20 year old boy, was on the verge of taking pills that granddads take to get it up. I'm talking about Viagra and Cialis which are used to treat erectile dysfunction and the Poxetin which is specially designed for premature ejaculation but is essentially an antidepressant. Viagra and Cialis constantly give me an unprompted erections for up to 24 hours after taking them but had no effect whatsoever on PE. Under the influence of the Poxetin I was like spaced out junkie super slow and dumb. I just wasn't myself. And the effects on premature ejaculation were inconsistent. Sometimes they were good, yes, but other times there weren't any. 
there were a few cases in which I couldn't even get an erection. Besides my desire to have sex had evaporated. All I felt like doing was staring at a dot on the ceiling. One time I experimented with a pill that was mixed between Viagra and the Poxetin that I had bought from the black market. The day after I took it, I experienced something that horrified me. As I walked into university, everything turned green. I was seeing everything around me in shades of green as if I had a green lenses on, but I didn't. After that, I never even came near dick pills ever again. But enough talk about failure. It's time for part two, or as I call it, the rice. Before getting to the best of the best, I will go over a couple of things that gave me moderate results. All these mishaps led me to devoting myself to the teachings of yoga. Yoga was an interest of mine for a long time, but I couldn't practice a whole lot of it because I lived in a dorm smashed together with two other guys in a medium-sized room. It was when I moved out and started putting more time into it when I began noticing the benefits. I realized that Bandha Triya, which by the way is quite dangerous exercise, was helping me with premature ejaculation. The effect was not consistent, but at that time I was pleased even with that. Then my yoga teacher showed me another short practice that was very worthwhile, but unfortunately didn't work all the time either. At times I was absolutely capable of controlling the ejaculation, but other times it didn't work. Still that doesn't change the fact that it proved to be very good and I have uploaded it in this YouTube channel. I have already received positive comments on it from people thanking me for my work and devotion. There is also a video of me performing a stretching routine which gave me weaker but steady results. This routine is developed by Master Kang, a Taekwondo Grandmaster. When I started, I thought of it as a way to improve my dancing skills, since it's a combination of stretches and techniques that tighten the abdominal muscles, but as I kept doing it, I realized that 3-4 times a week also improved my sexual performance. I can actually add some more practices that can have a satisfactory outcomes like dipping your feet in hot water, therapy with suction cups on the back, and very popular yoga exercise called salute to the sun. Six repetitions of the sun salutation is very good for male sexuality. Finally, it's time to talk about what you are most interested in and that is what I found was the most useful out of everything. In 2016, I began practicing La Jin. This is a stretching technique from traditional Chinese medicine. I bought Hong Chi Shao's book, Pai Da La Jin Self Healing, and in it I read about the way La Jin purifies the energy channels of the body connected to the sexual functions. I didn't suspect that this will turn out to be the cure I had been chasing for so long. Just starting, I kept doing Wajin daily because I felt it had a good effect on my musculoskeletal system even though there wasn't any progress in sex. To be honest, I don't remember what I was feeling in the beginning, but after a month and a half, I sensed the raising vigor, and it was more consistent than any of the other things I had tried. There was more to be desired, but I kept doing and increasing the length of the sessions. 10, 15, 20, and after 3 months, I was doing it 30 minutes a leg every day for almost 2 years. During that time, I rediscovered my sex life. At 25, I finally understood what real sex was, without premature ejaculation, without shame and embarrassment, and on top of that, I did it without taking pills that ruin my health or make me inadequate. Of course, there were heights and lows, but the more I practiced, the more powerful and stable the results were. 
Two years passed and I gradually put more time and effort into the second main exercise of the book, Paida. It is performed by patting and slapping different areas of the body, almost all of them, and can be done from 3 to 60 minutes. Paida enhanced the benefits I had from Wajin and made them last longer. Zones that are very good are the inner hairless part of the arms, the inner part of the legs, all sides of the knees, the sacrum just above the tailbone and the area between the belly button and the genitalia. Paida gives more healing crises in the beginning and you have to be a very consistent if you decide to take it up. I spent a lot of time exploring the map of the energy meridians of the body to decide where exactly to do Paida and get the results I want. By doing this, I started to learn a lot about uh, acupuncture points and how to locate them. This helped me develop a special acupressure program with self-massage points on the knee that gives quite good results. These are the things that help me. What are the disadvantages of Pydalogen? It has to be exercised every day or at least 4-5 times a week. In order to bear results, Pydalogen needs to become a lifestyle. Pyda and Login are both painful practices. The pain grows weaker over time but it's strong in the beginning and that makes a lot of people quit before getting the benefits from it. It takes a lot of time. One satisfactory session of Pida or Wajin takes about one hour of your day. Pida Wajin is not a very widespread practice. You probably won't receive understanding from your close ones. You will look weird in their eyes. After all, it does include slapping yourself and causing yourself pain. People often mock and make fun of it. That sort of social pressure can get to some enthusiasts. Pydalogen is not scientifically proven. There is no empirical research to back up its effectiveness. This can also prove to be an obstacle to people who have bound to traditional science. This is why I am describing my personal story instead of guaranteeing any effects of the practice, despite knowing people firsthand who have cured different diseases using these teachings. Despite these downsides, I can say that it's just very interesting. Pydalogen made me learn so much about my own body and still does. I am building an immense respect and love for Mother Nature, for cosmic consciousness. I love Pydalogen. Sometimes I can't wait to practice it even after all these years. I am leaving you an email via which you can contact me and ask me any questions you might have. I repeat this for the last time just to make sure that it's clear. I am not your doctor. I am just telling you my personal experience and views. Remember. Anytime you decide to take up a form of self-healing, please consult your practicing physician. Thank you for watching.